Hello, before you start watching this video, I just want to let you know that this is a test run to see what kind of responses I'm going to get from this type of video. There is a possibility that there could be more of these types of videos in the future. Thank you and enjoy. Hi, my name is Walker Tapley. I'm a professional photographer on the East Coast area, however I do travel. This channel is for teaching photography and tips and tricks, as well as modeling. Here are some examples of my work. You can also find my other social media in the link below. Make sure you like and subscribe for more fun content. Welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. I hope you've been enjoying my content, content lately. Uh, this video is going to be on how to get a tack sharp photo out of your camera. Number one, keep your ISO down. When your ISO gets too high, it takes away from the detail in your photo as well as the dynamic range of colors. Uh, you can also, when you zoom into the photo, can tell that there's little grain of information where the camera doesn't know uh, what, it's, what it's taking a photo of. So when your ISO is at uh, say like 6000 uh, and it's really dark out, your camera doesn't know what it's shooting so it's going to fill in that space for you uh, using its best guess. And this can come out in red, green, or blue pixels and it does not look good. Some photographers say it looks really great and they'll purposely have their ISO high so they can have that nice grainy effect. Um, I'm personally not a fan and it does not create your tack sharp photos. So keep your ISO as low as possible as long as your photo can still be properly exposed. A lot of new cameras you can start to get away with getting your ISO up into a thousand, maybe two thousand without seeing grain. Increase your shutter speed. A lot of times what the issue is is that you're seeing a little bit of camera shake inside your photo. This can be caused by having too slow of a shutter speed. So a good rule of thumb is to have your shutter speed equal or exceed the size millimeter lens that you are shooting. I like to shoot with a 70 to 200 millimeter. So if I'm shooting at 200 millimeters, I need my shutter speed to be at least 1 200th of a second or faster. And the or faster part is where you can really start to get those sharp photos because you're going to have zero shake. Especially with a lens that large, uh, it's pretty hard to keep steady. Number three, adjust your f-stop. When you're shooting landscape photos, uh, the higher your f-stop is, the better. That's not 100% true because if you get above like 16, 17, or 18, you might start to see a little bit of sensor dust in your photos. Now this is pretty easy to edit out, so you might be able to get away with it, uh, but typically, the highest you want your f-stop to be is around that 16 mark. Now when you make your f-stop number lower, it's actually making your focus point smaller. So everything outside of your focus point is probably going to be a little bit blurry, especially your background. So if you want, if you want a sharp background, if you want more things in focus, keep that f-stop number high. If you don't want a super sharp background, if you want bokeh in the background, or say somebody has flyaways and you need to make that focal point small to blur out the flyaways in their hair, then do so. Uh, but the f-stop alone does not control the sharpness of your photo. It adjusts the focal point, how big or small the focal point is, or what is in focus. Number four, have proper lighting. If you can use flash or if you have constant lights or uh, maybe you have a flash box, then this can be extremely beneficial, especially in low light situations where you may have to increase your ISO or bring down that f-stop to a low number or show, uh, slow down your shutter speed. When you have proper lighting, you can really use your camera to the best of its abilities. You can keep that ISO low. You can you can have a higher f-stop if you want to, and you can have a faster shutter speed, all because you have an external light source giving your subject proper exposure. Number five, or maybe six, I don't remember. Use a tripod. This can help, especially with camera shake, because you're not holding your camera. You stick the camera on a tripod, and this will allow you to bring your shutter speed a little bit lower than the millimeter lens that you're using. 
However, you do need to keep in mind your subject can still move. An old fact back in science class that you might have learned is somebody's body is constantly moving. Your body is never completely standing still. So keep that in mind when you adjust your shutter speed and bring it really low uh, as it is on a tripod. If your lens or camera has it, use in-body or lens image stabilization. Nikon, Sony, Canon, they all call image stabilization different things. I think Sony calls it vibration adjustment or uh, I'm not sure. You'll, you'll have to look up uh, what image stabilization is called with your brand of camera. But turn it on uh, and use it to the best of your ability. What image stabilization does is it allows you to bring that shutter speed a little bit slower than the millimeter lens that you are using because inside of the lens, if you have your image stabilization on, the tiny glass inside of your lens can move a little bit to compensate for the camera shake. Now, if it's in-body image stabilization, then your sensor is able to move a little bit so that you have less camera shake. So use image stabilization if you have it, unless it's on a tripod. I think this is number seven, but make sure your focal point is in the right spot. If you're taking a photo of a person, then your focus point needs to be right on the eyeball. If they're at an angle like so, then your focus point needs to be on the eye that is closest to the camera. And then everything behind that, especially if you have a low f-stop number, is going to be out of focus and a little blurry. You can tell if your focal point is in the wrong spot when taking a photo of a person, especially if the focus point is behind the person or in the corner of your camera, then your whole subject is going to be blurry. So get your focus point, put it on their eyeball, and make sure you practice on keeping that focus point on their eye closest to the camera. And lastly, number eight, make sure your gear's clean. Make sure your lens is clean, make sure your camera sensor is clean, make sure the mirror inside of your camera is clean. If you want to clean your camera lens, you can get a microfiber cloth that is specifically built for cleaning camera lenses. If you want to clean your camera sensor, I would recommend taking it to a professional because if you mess up your camera sensor, you're going to want to be able to hold somebody else liable for it. Thank you for watching. Please make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate your support uh, and I hope you learned something. But that's it for now. I hope to see you in the next video and I hope you have the best day.